Maybe that's what George should do. Carry all the ants outside. <laughs> oh, one gajillion of them? That wouldn't work. George showed Hundley his discovery. Ants follow food. Maybe they'd follow it right out the door. So that was the solution. Put the food outside and the ants would leave. And of course, they come back with their food. George had another idea. Maybe he could get the ants inside the trash can by filling it with food. It was working. The ants crawled into the can as fast as their legs would carry them. George had to get the ants out of the apartment fast before they escape. The ants were outside, problem solved. Except now they had a new problem. Where would they put them? They couldn't put the ants on the sidewalk. They'd get squished. And they'd get even more squished on the street. The park. The ants would love it there. Hundley was a small dog, but he made a very big noise. What's going on there? George and Hundley set the ants free in a nice empty area of the park where no one would step on them. George said goodbye to each and every ant. This could take a while. It had been quite a morning, but the ants were gone and everything was okay. George, I can't believe this apartment. George had forgotten to clean up his mess. Good job, George. Not only did you clean the apartment, you also took out the trash. He did? Oh, oh yeah, he did. <laughs> of course, you also shoved napkins and handkerchiefs into the wall and covered it with bandages, but I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> you just sit down and take it easy. I'll go make us some lunch. <laughs> George could finally relax. The apartment was clean, and he'd never have to worry about ants again.
It took a while, but George's bucket was finally full. lifting machine, or an elevator. Mm. Or a cow. Mm -hmm. <gasps> George figured with Leslie's help, he could lift the bucket off the tap. It wasn't a whole bucket of syrup, but it would still cover a lot of pancakes. Forgot to turn the tree off. <laughs> Come on! Okay, okay. Ah pancakes? For me? Well, the tree made it, but we tapped the tree all by ourselves. Wow. Uh, mm, mm, very moist. <laughs> that doesn't taste like syrup at all. Grandpa's trees must be broken. No, no, no. The trees aren't broken, George. Maple syrup trees give sap, not syrup. Sap? Sap becomes syrup after it's boiled down. Luckily, you've come to the right place. We boil it right here at the sugar shack. Oh, yeah! Now, this will take a while. And if we leave it too long, it can boil over, burn, and be ruined. So we have to keep an eye on it. Watching sap boil was a lot like watching sap drip. It took forever. Aha! Uh -huh. Looks like it's ready. What do you say to that? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Leslie, how did you get out? Whoops. I think she wants syrup. Cows like syrup a lot. <gasps> George, the syrup! It's going to boil over. No matter how hard he blew, George couldn't cool the syrup down. Uh, uh, Leslie! <laughs> Maybe if they fanned it. <laughs> I thought you didn't know anything about making syrup. You knew butter stops syrup from boiling over. Huh? Oh. Well, here you are. Your own bottle of syrup. <laughs> it takes a whole lot of sap to make a little bit of syrup. Thanks, George. Best syrup ever. <laughs> Luckily, a little bit of syrup has a whole lot of taste. Oh, if only we could get the next CD going. That would give us time to find the key. Or Earl. Well, uh, maybe George can do it. Oh, he has to push the play button. A button? Uh, well, George is great at pushing buttons. Which one is it? The one with the triangle. Okay. 
But the booth is soundproof, so how are we gonna tell him? Oh, a triangle, triangle, huh? What were they doing? Didn't they know there was no time for games? George knew all the Bonnie Smooth songs, and this one was about to end. The worst thing on radio is dead air. Oh, he's not getting it. Hey, I can draw a picture. <laughs> Why were they coloring? The song was about to end. How could he play more music? The CD was in the player. All George had to do was hit play. But which button was it? Uh -huh. Hey, a triangle. Uh -huh. Maybe it was the triangle button. Uh -huh. Good job! He did it! <gasps> Bonnie's calling soon, and Earl's still not back! We've got to find that key! Oh, boy. This was no time for playing around. Wasn't Bonnie Smooth calling it, too? Something had to be done. Aww. Answering the phone and playing a CD were easy. But he didn't know how to work the mic and those sliding things. He had the book. Here we go. First the mic, then the slider, then the phone. This looked like a phone interview. <laughs> oh, does he not realize Bonnie Smooth is calling in five minutes? Maybe George can hook up the call. He can make popcorn and program the VCR. There are a lot of steps. We could draw another picture. It, it worked last time. I think it's too much to show in a picture. I know. We'll make a model. <laughs> Done. It looks uh, terrible. Close enough. wasn't coming through the phone this time. What had he forgotten? Hal. Hal and Hal? <coughs> oh, I thought I'd missed you. How are you? Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> he did it! Yes! Look, my boss always said a monkey could do my job. Thanks for letting me come on with my new song. I wrote a special for you, you know, and it goes like this. drumming. How long has it been? I'm back. Did I miss anything? <laughs> hey, there's a monkey in the booth. Not now. He's in the middle of an interview. George was very proud of himself. He had run an entire radio station. Maybe someday he could even learn how to tie his shoes. Oh, dancing down the sidewalk, swinging on a breeze. Now that George had brown paint, he was ready to make the rest of his colors. <laughs> Except the bunny had its own idea for the fresh fruit. There you are, George. 
you took off so fast, I didn't get to ask what you'd like to drink. I have cranberry juice, carrot juice, grape juice, blueberry juice, wheatgrass juice. <laughs> George took one of each, because an artist never knows when a rabbit might eat his art supplies. That is one healthy monkey. The juice worked great. No mashing necessary. George had his paint, and his new friends had lunch. Only, his sand didn't slip. It stuck. Maybe it needed to dry. Watching paint dry was about as much fun as, well, watching paint dry. George thought of a way to speed up the process. <laughs> he wants a hair dryer in the desert. But instead of drying, his paint went flying. So George found a way to keep his paint in place. Plus, the bottles made painting a snap. George's friends had developed a real taste for art. So George found a way to keep his painting safe from bunnies. But not breezes. It almost made him miss the sticky stuff. Do you need a napkin? Fork? Radio? Of course. Glue. Why didn't I think of that? A monkey with glue. He had his paint, he had his canvas, and he had an audience. He glued. He painted. He could do them at the same time. And if you put on too much sand, <gasps> ooh, ooh. no problem. Only the sand on the glue stuck. He couldn't wait for the man and John to see it. Hey. Why wait? His sand painting was portable. <laughs> wow, is that a sand painting? <laughs> you are some artist. <laughs> For me? Thank you, but why? <laughs> That's okay. Sand paintings are supposed to get messed up. That's how the medicine is released. Oh. <laughs> oh no, you don't have to mess up this one. Some sand paintings are medicine. Others are art. Well, I guess giving glue to a monkey was a good thing after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I say, George, uh, think maybe you could make one for us next? Yeah. He sure could, but Ooh. he'd need a new canvas. One gum wrapper? That's your trash? <laughs> and this is... <laughs> stuff you want to keep. <laughs> I see. Did you find George? Wow, we Look at all this trash. This will earn us another 50 points at least. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, 
Are you saying this is your collection? Uh-huh. <laughs> George, a, a collection isn't just random stuff you find on the street. A collection has to relate in some way, like a stamp collection or a coin collection or my commemorative pig collection. <laughs> okay, you can keep some of this stuff. <laughs> but not all of it. Find some things that go together and make that your collection. Then put everything else in a bag and bring it downstairs, okay? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Finding things that went together wasn't going to be easy. The pirate ship floated on water and was made of wood. <laughs> the duck floated on water, but it wasn't made of wood. Um, uh... And the heart-shaped box wouldn't float very well at all. <laughs> what about a collection of round things? He had a lot of those. Wait, that meant he'd have to throw out the ship. Well, since the boat was made of wood, George decided to have a wood collection. But then he'd have to give up his watch. There were blue things, and things that were half blue, half green. At last, George knew just what to do. Okay, it looks like we've weighed all the bags. Where's George? We can't win without his trash. <laughs> um, this bag is empty. <laughs> um, George, is that the only thing that didn't fit into your collection? <laughs> oh, there may be more trash upstairs, but I think we have to go see. Well, this is highly unorthodox, but okay. Now, I have to warn you, the apartment may look a little messy, so... Ta -da! Well, I'll be. That is beautiful, George. <laughs> beautiful? Oh, it's a work of art. A color collection. Way to go, George. <laughs> And what better way to capture the can-do spirit of Pretty City Day than to turn trash into something, well, pretty? <laughs> With your permission, I'd like to hang this in the City Art Museum. <laughs> in fact, I think that would ensure that Pod 7, led by Steve, will be on the Pretty City poster. I hereby declare that Pod 7, led by Steve, is the winner of the City Prettification Contest. Isn't it great, George? My, uh, I mean, our picture on a poster, thanks to your work of art. <laughs> Looks like a number two carbon pencil stub. Nice yellow. <laughs> this was a good beginning of a whole new collection.